Hi, it's me Tina Amir and welcome to my channel. So for today, we're going to learn about Malay Taboo Part 1. So in Malay, we call it as Pantang Larang Orang Melayu. But before I begin, for this video, I'm just going to use informal pronunciation. For those of you who still not clear yet, what is informal pronunciation? Please watch my number 53 video which is about confusing pronunciation. So our topic for today is Malay Tebu Part 1. So it means Pantang Larang Orang Melayu. Pantang Larang Orang Melayu. So we say Pantang Larang even it's long we don't say Tebu because Tebu we have so we don't really like to say that. So we say Pantang Larang even it's long but we're willing to say it. Before I proceed to this lesson i like to share with you i grew up in the village so this kind of pantang larang or tebu very much embedded in the mentality especially in the old time of course so when i was a kid i totally believe in that but of course now is modern time and if you go and tell this to modern people or professional people and of course if you say you believe and practice this kind of thing, they will tell you it's rubbish, sampah, or karut, or mengarut, which means nonsense. Karut is the root word. Or they will tell you, you merepe. Okay, merepe means talking nonsense. So, cakap yang bukan-bukan. So, merepe means cakap yang bukan-bukan. So, you cannot really direct translate this. Talk like not not okay that's not the meaning it means talking nonsense so when i was a kid that's how the elders told me to not doing something but as you grow up of course you don't bother about this kind of thing but in case if somebody still believe it then it's up to individual and it's okay if you want to believe it like that as long as you don't harm anyone but for this topic i introduced to you it's not because i want you to believe on this kind of thing as well but it's nice to learn or to know and to understand things or culture which is different than ours right so that's why i like to introduce to you something may seem nonsense to you but it somehow is knowledge also it's good for you to know so i give formal example here orang mengandung tidak dibenarkan memukul binatang kalau tidak Anak yang dilahirkan akan cacat atau tidak sempurna sifatnya. I repeat for my Malay. Orang mengandung tidak dibenarkan memukul binatang. Kalau tidak, anak yang dilahirkan akan cacat atau tidak sempurna sifatnya. Speaking part, orang mengandung or somebody also say, orang pregnant tak boleh pukul binatang. Kalau tak, anak yang lahir nanti cacat atau tak sempurna sifat. I repeat, orang mengandung or orang pregnant tak boleh pukul binatang. Kalau tak, anak yang lahir nanti cacat atau tak sempurna sifat. So, in English, it means pregnant women are not allowed to hit animals. Otherwise, the baby born will be deformed or not in a perfect shape. So, I guess basically this is like karma. Older people ask pregnant women to behave. Okay? But maybe it happens because maybe this pregnant woman stubborn, not listen much. So, the way for you to approach this woman is for you to threaten her to remind her about karma in a way. So that's why they tell something like this. Until today, many Malay people believe in this thing and they have so much belief or taboo when they're pregnant. But we're going to discuss it on other topic. This is just for superficial issue. Next taboo, next pantang larang, for Malay, tidak dibenarkan makan berpindah tempat. Kalau tidak, berisiko berkahwin ramai. Tidak dibenarkan makan berpindah tempat. Kalau tidak, bersiko berkahwin ramai. 
So speaking, tak boleh makan pindah tempat. Tak boleh makan pindah tempat, okay? Tak boleh makan pindah tempat. Kalau tak, nanti kahwin ramai. Kalau tak, nanti kahwin ramai. So English one, not allowed to eat in many places, which means you eat one meal, but you not even finish it and then you move to other places to eat. For example, you started to eat in dining table, not finish, you move into the living room, and then you not finish, you again bring the meal into the room. Basically, the elders tell this so that you don't make a mess. Because once you make a mess in the dining table, and then you again move, then you make a mess in the living room. And then if you move the bedroom and eating the same meal, then again, you will make mess there. So they will threaten you with this. So what is the so threatening part here? Normally in Malay mentality, old mentality, people get married very early, like 13, 14, you know, at that time. So they normally marry with one person and then, they reach old age together and die together, something like that. So people basically live with one person for a long time. This kind of thing like threaten. So for example, if female, if she get married with many means she will end up divorce, divorce, and divorce, and then get married and get married again, something like that. And same goes with guys. So maybe even polygamy is strictly to four, but maybe they end up divorced and also remarry, something like that. So it's kind of like something terrifying, you know, for people at that time. So that's why they threaten like this. Okay, another one. For Mamele, gadis tidak dibenarkan menyanyi di dapur. Kalau tidak, akan berkahwin dengan lelaki tua. Gadis tidak dibenarkan menyanyi di dapur. Kalau tidak, akan berkahwin dengan lelaki tua. So, speaking part, orang perempuan tak boleh menyanyi kat dapur. Kalau tak, kahwin dengan lelaki tua. Orang perempuan tak boleh menyanyi kat dapur. Kalau tak, kahwin dengan lelaki tua. So, English sentence here, girls are not allowed to sing in the kitchen, otherwise will marry an old guy. So, why is this one? If you look at this word gadis, gadis means young girl but not married, okay? So normally in the family, if you have gadis at home, they also take the responsibility to take care of the house other than the parents. So normally this female, when they're doing housework chores in the kitchen, they like to sing. And then they forgot to put salt in the food or maybe food just burn because they are too much into the singing instead of cooking. So, all people, the elders, wanted them to be careful, so they give this kind of threat. So, what is so threatening with this kind of thing? Basically, in Malay mentality, basically in old time, now people don't mind that much. So, if you want to marry a guy, then the age must be like same as you or just slightly, maybe one or two years older than you. That is how the mentality before. But nowadays people don't mind that much. But nowadays also people realize that actually you need to be careful when you're cooking. Okay, not too much into singing and then forget what you have to do. They want the younger ladies, not the old one because normally the old one already skillful in the kitchen. Okay, next. Pantang larang. Former Malay, tidak dibenarkan duduk di atas bantal. Kalau tidak, bisul akan timbul di punggung. Tidak dibenarkan duduk di atas bantal. Kalau tidak, bisul akan timbul di punggung. So speaking part, tak boleh duduk ke atas bantal. Kalau tak, naik bisul kat buntut. Tak boleh duduk ke atas bantal. Kalau tak, naik bisul kat buntut. Okay, in English it means not allowed to sit on the pillow. Otherwise, boy or abscess will appear on your butt. So this one, basically, because in the old time, you use pillows strictly just for sleeping. You put your head on that. So to warn the young girl to take care of the pillow and to take care of the hygiene, I mean. So they warn this young girl not to sit on it. Because in the old time, maybe people just sit wherever and it's not that clean. And then you, with that dirt on your butt, and then you sit on the pillow. So that's why they don't like it. So to avoid the younger doing that, 
to make the younger listen to them. So they will say, boy will appear on your butt. Of course, the younger will be afraid. Okay, last one, the pantang larang is tidak dibenarkan membuka payung di dalam rumah. Kalau tidak, ular akan masuk ke dalam rumah. Tidak dibenarkan membuka payung di dalam rumah. Kalau tidak, ular akan masuk ke dalam rumah. So speaking, tak boleh buka payung dalam rumah. Kalau tak, ular masuk dalam rumah. Tak boleh buka payung dalam rumah. Kalau tak, ular masuk dalam rumah. So it means not allowed to open or to put up umbrella in the house. Otherwise, snakes will enter the house. This kind of pantang larang may be because you normally use payung when it's rain, right? So it's wet. To make it dry, then you put up, you open the umbrella. But it will wet the house. So to avoid that, old people will say not to open or not to put up that umbrella in the house. You can do it outside, okay? That's about the taboo. Well, I guess that's all our lesson for now. Thank you very much for watching me. And if you like my video, you may support me on Patreon. And for those of you who's watching me right now, thank you very much. Until we meet again, bye.